Well, hello, dear viewers. Welcome to Level Up Reviews. This is Wolf, and something bit different today. There were Ultima mangas released in Japan, so let's jam. <laughs> Ultima was quite popular in Japan. There were exclusive novels, short stories, and mangas released. As you got from the title, we will talk about mangas today. I guess I should start chronologically with Ultima, Terror of Exodus. It is published by GICC and is written by Genji Tanaka. Unfortunately, I could not find anything about him so we will not talk about the author today. It was released on August 25 in 1988 and cost only 880 yen, which is around $7 today. Of course, they will cost you much more, they are quite rare, you see. The Terror of Exodus, as you guessed, is relating the story of Ultima 3, although there are some differences in the story. Exodus is God of Destruction here, and he revives Mundane and Minax. After he returns to Caesarea, he attacks different cities. The head of Lyceum sends his daughter, Ida the Cleric, to Lord British for protection. And of course, Lord British being a Lord British, he ducks the responsibilities and assigns Bard Lennon as her guardian. Although, Head of Lyceum miscalculated some things because, of course, Demons of Exodus attack Britannia. Miraculously, from the Earth's future, a space pilot named Genji is summoned to Britannia. While our heroes are getting in trouble, Bigelow, a huge robot with an impressive arsenal, saves them. Yep, this sounds pretty much like Ultima. Lord British informs now our four heroes that they match the description of the legendary Dragon Warriors. No, not those Dragon Warriors, but Dragon Warrior was indeed inspired by Ultima. So after he reveals that he summoned them and they need to stop Exodus, he goes into trance and doesn't help our protagonists at all in the future. Another excuse from British not to do anything, now he's in trance. So useless sometimes even in the comic books. So they go to Hidden City of Dawn to find Prophet Nagaraja, sort of like what happens in the game. But this time around, Minex is after our protagonists. She catches up to them in the City of Yu. Her powers are pretty consistent from the games. She manipulates time and space. She separates the party using her powers. But Ida is also a mage, so she manages to use her powers to find Genji and implant memories of herself in him from his childhood. So basically she brainwashes him. This does strengthen the bond between them and makes Genji also much stronger than he used to be. Strong enough to face Minex and defeat her by cutting a crystal on her head. And there I had to go through so much to find Quicksword. Not even a blessing from Father Antos? Come on. Or maybe Genji was already on Mars and got the blessing from Father Antos. I don't know, he's a space pilot. In the City of Dawn, Nagaraja gives them four marks, shaped like a dragon, and transports them to Ambrosia. No dungeon crawling? No stealing a ship? Although, they do have to fight Mundane in here, who is as cowardly as ever, and after getting beaten, he runs off immediately. Approaching Castle Fire is very similar to the game. Bart Lennon has to blow the Silver Horn, Great Earth Serpent immediately attacks the party, and Bigelow has to sacrifice himself. See what happens when you do not know the Word of Passage? Finally, Exodus appears possessing body of mundane. He destroys the world and defeats our heroes. Yeah, interesting twist here, huh? But of course, our heroes awaken the power of dragon and defeat Exodus. Somehow lifeless world restores itself. I do not know how, 
Bigelow is even reborn as a human being. So basically end of every JRPG ever? <laughs> All jokes aside, it's not a bad manga. It has some cool references to Ultima. Honestly, I did not expect some grand storytelling here. Some pages are a bit messy, but I like art style in general. Second manga I'm gonna review is really Force One to be written. The reason for this is, quite frankly, I do not even know where to put it, and I was even speculating if I should review it or not. I guess I'm gonna give it a little mention. Ultima Maze of Schwarzschild. Despite the fact that characters are same as from Ultima 3 Terror of Exodus and manga is called Ultima, it has really nothing to do with Ultima storyline. The manga was released on November 15, 1991. <laughs> so it was released exactly the same date I was born, huh? Interesting. It was only 100 yen more expensive than one before. As far as the story goes, well, I'm gonna tell you gist of from what I gathered, because honestly, this manga is impossible to find anywhere. The story takes place in the Genji's world. Monday and Minex are scientists who find Exodus's body on an asteroid. They try to revive him. As I said, it has very little to do with Ultima. Unless you remember motorcycles and mecha battles in the game. There are also some weird flashbacks, illusions and all kinds of different stories within the stories. If you're Ultima fan, really, I mean, why would you read it? This is not Ultima. So I'm gonna skip over this one very quickly. On August 29th, 1988, GICC published another manga. It is written by Tanaka, but different Tanaka, Yoko Tanaka. Manga artist's job must be one of the most thankless in the world, because I cannot find anything about her either. Ultima Quest of the Avatar follows the Force game in the story. It is odd though, they switched the story from anybody can be an avatar really, to a chosen child becoming an avatar, although they don't directly tell you this. It is 20 yen more expensive than the first manga. No big difference really. The manga starts with Isla the Paladin getting attacked by demons. She is found in a holy forest by Lord Talford and his son Shiva. They also find a baby next to her with a birthmark of Ang on his hand. Well. You pretty much guessed it, right? So they decide to adopt him. They name him Dane. Meanwhile, Lord British sends out calls throughout the kingdom. They need a new champion for his new ethical system. Avatar. Ten years later, Dane grows up to become a decent swordman and a good magician. Shiva answers the call of Lord British and goes on the pilgrimage to become the Avatar. Five years pass, and under a tree, our 15-year-old hero meets Lo, who is supposed to be Yolo. She is even a bard. I mean, it's gonna get weirder and weirder with this stuff, trust me. And how do you further a plot in Ultima comic books? Why you guessed it! Demons attack and kill Lord Talford. Well, seriously injure him first but he eventually dies. I mean, honestly, this is like a running sim in Ultima mangas. Before his death, he charges Dane to find Shiva. So they go to Britannia. On their way there, they meet Kati, the shepherd boy. You guessed it, it is Katrina the shepherd. What, did Arthur set out to change the gender of every character? He sells our hero's silver serpent egg, Although, the dragon hatches out of it. I mean, could you imagine if real Silver Serpent hatched out of it? How useless would that be? How do you even drag Silver Serpent around? Lord British quickly realizes who Dane is, but for some reason he doesn't tell him. He just gives him companion, Julia the Tinker. Seriously? Not even a name change? It's so easy, like Julian maybe. I mean, come on. It's so odd. 
While this happens, we find out that the villain is Hawkwind the Seer. This is odd. He is the spiritual guide of the Avatar, and as we find out later, he is the Time Lord in disguise. So it makes absolutely no sense. In their travels, they come across a fight. Of course, demons are attacking something, so we have to stop here, right? Two fighters here are Joffrey and Shamino. At least they are somewhat accurate. I mean, they are male. Uh, actually, at first I wasn't sure about Shamino, but yeah, he's a male too. He's a lot of fun, actually. Probably one of the few characters in this manga who actually gets some characteristics to himself. So, Kat gets injured into one of the battles, and he's as useless as Katrina is in the games. Pretty accurate, I guess. Maria the Mage cures him, and agrees to join the party in exchange for Mandrake Roots, which is one of the rarest and best reagents in the game. Here it's really easy, Master of Dane just points out where they are. Why did I have to do so much work in the games? Come on. Speaking of getting something easy, Shamino out of nowhere brings over a ship. What, were they hiding it in their pockets? Geoffrey does hint that they stole it from pirates, so fine, I will not complain. After picking up Maria, they set out to find Mundane Skull. At least it takes more work to get it here than in the actual game. They have to fight demons, and the skull is actually behind hidden door, which they accidentally fall through. After they get it, it immediately teleports them to Abyss, though. I mean, what? No sailing, no fighting million pirate ships? I really feel like I got short end of the stick. Inside, they find Shiva, who has changed under manipulations of Hawkwind. He says no one can fulfill the quest and that Dane is not his real brother. In short, insert every big brother gun evil nihilistic speech from every anime ever in here. And of course, how else, after Dane is injured, Shiva has a change of heart and saves Dane. In all seriousness, I see where a lot of JRPGs got their influences from. It's pretty cool, but at the same time, bit cheesy and overly dramatic. So, finally, Dane marches to the void to fight Hawkwind alone. The manga ends with young boy resembling Dane running towards Law, who is sitting under the tree. Yeah, there is a romantic subplot between Dane and Law, but I uh, don't want to talk about it because every time I think of it, I see this and I do not really want to see this. I have to say, I do enjoy the art, but story is nothing to write about. Very random ending. Honestly, I expected so much more from the manga that is based on such a great game. And finally, third one in the series, Ultima The Fall of Majensi. Written by not a person with a last name Tanaka, surprisingly enough. This one is written by Hiroyuki Watanabe. And of course, there is nothing about him either, so... Let's get to it. Of course, it's published by same publisher in 1990. This manga is 80 yen more expensive than the Quest of the Avatar. We are observing inflation in progress, I guess. Ultima The Fall of Magency follows pirate captain Susadora and his crew. Apparently, monsters have taken over seas. Who our heroes have to deal with because they're pirates? After fighting one such ship, they return to their home port of Galaya, where they meet Susadora's sister, Layla, who is in love with Johnny, one of Susadora's mates. They kind of have a turmoil relationship. Johnny even breaks promise with her to go fishing. Instead, he leaves with his crew and Susadora to go sailing. Meanwhile, we are introduced to the villain, Viter, and his mother. They say something about Susadora forgetting who he really is, and they send monsters in disguise who pretend to be Susadora and his crew and attack Britannian ships. <laughs> it's surprisingly brutal. Even more surprisingly, Lord British actually sends people after them that are not Avatar. Wow. 
you can tell this is not canon. Lord British actually doing something? Well, he does send ninjas after them. I didn't know they had ninjas in Britannia. But Rani Sentry, captain of Britannian special forces, is a badass. She absolutely takes them apart. So they are brought before Lord British, who already knows the truth. Everybody starts praising British's wisdom, but I love how Susadora puts him back in his place. I mean, if he really knows it all, why didn't he do something to begin with to stop the demons? Meanwhile, the demons attack Galaya and kill everybody, including Layla. Gotta say, this manga is a bit disappointing. In the end, we find out that Vitor and Susadora were gods guarding celestial heaven. Yeah, sounds very Ultima like, right? Rani Sentry dies, and Vitor and Susadora transform into monsters, which causes the destruction of New Magencia. And here I thought Magencia fell because of pride. They're both slain by an artifact built by Katrina. Yeah. Katrina the Shepherd is useful, that's a new one. Yeah, as I said, it's just disappointing. I have to say though, I do like personality of Susadora and design of Vitor, but otherwise, Vitor is a very weak villain. Well, this ends my Ultima Mangas review. Hope you enjoyed it, and let me know if you like stuff like this, and you want me to make more videos like this. If you like my video, please like, share and subscribe. And don't forget to leave a comment. Thank you very much.